are actually going to look at something that I think is overlooked a lot in magic. Okay. Probably one of the most overlooked things and probably one of the most underused things because people often say, eh, I've seen that before. I've dealt with that before, but we're going to be looking at the thumb tip. Now our members ask for this show. They ask for a little in-depth training, didn't they, Alex? Yes, definitely. They definitely did. They asked for this. So today we are going to hit the thumb tip hard. We're going to hit it with a tractor. Then we're going to hit it with a backhoe. And then we're going to dig in and we're going to teach you everything you need to know about the thumb tip. Did you just ask me what a backhoe is? Sorry, you're on mute, Aaron. Everything you need to know with a backhoe? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what a backhoe is? I have no idea. I don't even know what a front <laughs> hoe is, although I, I think I met one There's in Atlanta no. once. Uh, well, a backhoe is, uh, well, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that on another show. So anyway, <laughs> what are we going to start out with today on the old thumb tip ah, world? Well, I think we wanted to uh, start by having Alex give us an example. Oh, what a drag. We, we've violated our first rule, Alex. Why don't you show us a quick trick? to get started with. And uh, you know, that's what happens when you do a training on a specific topic, isn't it? It's, it happens, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? All right. I'm gonna go to, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go to Adam on this. Okay, all right, we're gonna show it. Here it is. Uh, this, is uh, this is awesome. Alexander Slimmer and his favorite trick. This Yay. is a good one, man. This is a good one. I hate, almost hate to give it up. But I think it's, it's time. It's time to talk about this. Actually, I need some help. Steve, do you mind helping? No, I would be happy to help. You would be happy to help. This is awesome. I need you to pretend for me. Pretend that we're hanging out in the same room. I know it's weird. We have the internet between us. But uh, pretend we're in the same room. Okay. And I have some sugar packets here. If we were at a restaurant, I would give you the sugar packets on the table. Pick a sugar packet, any packet. Uh, let's go with that one. All right, how about this one right here? Yeah, that was actually the one I was pointing at. That's actually the one you're pointing at. This is perfect. I'm going to do something. I have a pen here. I'm going to just write on the sugar packet here and make it simple as if you wrote it. And uh, there we go. Put a little mark on the sugar packet. Yes. Could be your name. Could be anything. But I take the sugar packet, and it's very simple. I just rip off the tip of the sugar packet just like this. And I get a little bit of sugar and I just dump it into my fist just like this. You can see it go down in there. And then I drop this in here, get even a little piece, it's like a receipt. I push it down in here and uh, hang on, there's a couple of uh, little little grains that went there. Um, I just do this, give it a little, uh, little blow. <sighs> Comes back together. In fact, uh, there's your little mark. You can see that's your sugar packet. That is sweet and low. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a quickie and a lovely little illusion there, man. I say little, but uh, bring that to my dinner table anytime. Yeah. So here's the thing. Uh, you know, I just remember discovering this when we were teaching uh, magic at Magic Camp in Canada all those years ago, but I have every bet that it applies to everyone watching this right now. Uh, most magicians who've been in magic for any length of time know what a thumb tip is. Know that it's an incredibly versatile thing. Know that great magicians throughout history have always recommended it, right? And don't use it themselves. In fact, they tend to be frightened of it. Let's just go ahead and ask in chat, how many of you literally are a little bit scared of actually doing the thumb tip because you're afraid you're going to get caught with a plastic thumb in your hand? Look at that. Mm -hmm. A lot of really skilled, experienced guys and people avoid it really like a dentistry because they're scared they're going to get caught with a thumb mm. on uh, their hand. Now, I remember, and a lot of us had the same experience when I was a kid, I was purchased a thumb tip and a silk from the local magic store and I did it for my parents and I went, ta-da. And they could see it and I resolved never to do it again, right? And, and I didn't for, and I wouldn't have maybe done it for 20 years, except I went off to work for a magic store when I was 18 years old and I was 
taken to Atlanta to train for this national magic store. And the very first day, I was taught the trick that you're about to see. So we're gonna show you a lot of really cool thumb tip applications today, wonderful tricks you can do. But we're gonna start with not only an incredibly visual trick, but a trick that's designed specifically to help you get over that fear so that you can be comfortable with a thumb tip on your hand and, and be able to use it to create a whole lot of miracles. Uh, this is a, a clip from an, one of our first member trainings. Uh, Adam is going to show us a trick uh, of me performing it. Please pay no attention to any different health uh, issues you see in my face. In <laughs> Hi, everybody. Aaron Fisher here, and you may know me for card magic, but right now I'm going to show you something a little bit strange. This is the most clear representation I can give you of how magicians view reality as being slightly different than your average folk. You see, on one sense, reality is clear, present, substantial, real. But in another, just like this handkerchief, it's transparent, ethereal, totally up for grabs. Before you know it, it's back, just the way we started, and it's right in front of you again. We'll try this again. Watch carefully. Take this handkerchief. Put it in my hand like so. And it's gone completely. And in fact, well, that's strange. I suppose we'll move on with the card trick. Would you take those out of the deck? And of course my audience does. And they find something they never expected in a million years. That's the perfect opener. Now we're gonna talk about what it is and what you need to do it yourself. Yeah, man. I love that. I love that, Aaron. It is that to me, that's the perfect, it really is the perfect train on how to use a thumb tip. There's so many little touches there that I think people, if they could, if they can just grasp like the two or three little fundamental things about what you're doing, they will feel totally comfortable approaching using a thumb tip, uh, in, in everyday situations. Um, you know, right off the bat, I mean, there's lots that I can notice, but I don't want to jump on your uh, thunder. Is there uh, something you like to start out by saying? Yeah, well, the, the, first, I only had to do it two times before I could do it, and I've never been able to forget it since. So I was terrified the first time I did it, right? And I didn't do it great. And then the second time I did it, it was fine. And then, you know, I did it a thousand times in the next couple of years. So I recommend that you grab a thumb tip, and if you have a magician's silk, go through this with me with the i was gonna say cards in hand with the stuff in your hand because it's really all about learning these simple movements what's beautiful about the silk vanish is it's colorful people can see it it's big and it's a nice way to make something big that people perceive takes up a lot more space than it actually takes up disappear really disappear and you'll find that not only will you learn how to handle the thumb tip comfortably so that you can use it for all kinds of stuff, but you'll actually find yourself performing it. Now, uh, as I recall, a six, inch a six inch cut silk is ideal for a standard thumb tip for most people. Um, I, at one point a few years ago, bought a diamond cut silk because they were even bigger. If I had it to do over again, I would probably just stick with a standard six inch silk. The idea of the diamond cut silk is, of course, it takes up the same amount of space, but seems to be bigger, right? But it's also a diamond cut silk, so you have to decide how you feel about that. Um, the reason you have to be careful about the size of the silk relative to the size of the thumb tip is that you don't uh, want too much thumb tip to fit inside, right? Uh, one of the first things that we're always taught is that a thumb tip isn't a thumb cap, right? And that ultimately when we're using the thumb tip, there's something in there and the thumb is extended a little bit, right? The handling I'm about to teach you is gonna let you make sure that uh, not only can you beautifully vanish the silk, the silk itself gives a lot of the cover and the rest of it's all in a precise series of movements so that you can have the confidence to know you're not gonna get caught. Does that make sense so far, Adam? Yeah, totally. Yeah, that totally makes sense. 
Um, that the the getting caught part is the part people are always mostly concerned with. Please continue. All right. So to start, you put the thumb tip on your right hand, and notice that I don't stick it way down on there. I actually have it just about at the joint, right? You can hold it on there, it's safe, uh, but you wanna be able to get it on and off easily, and that's, that's the first thing to do. Now, instead, in some of these applications, you'd have to be careful to hold your hand like this, but when you have the silk, you can bring it right out of your hand and never be worried that anyone's gonna notice anything when you're getting started, and that's a beautiful thing. So when I take the silk out, I hold it with my second finger against my thumb, and at the same time, I put my first finger on top of it, like that. That's important because the silk covers the very first action. During the very first action, I'm gonna take that thumb tip, I'm gonna put it in my left hand and begin to stuff the thumb, uh, the silk into my hand. So rather simply, it looks like this, right? And all you're doing is you're, as you're coming over the hand, yeah, show us that side view. Make yeah. a fist, a light fist, as you. Now, you can make the fist first and duck it in, but I think it's a little more natural. Of course, no one's going to notice anyway, and believe me, you can, as we say, Adam, ham dog up a lot of this. You can do a lot of this sort of right and get away with it, but I think the one thing that makes you confident is knowing that you're doing it in, in the right way. That's always been important for me. So my hand is empty, and as I make the fist... It seems as though I'm simply making a fist and raising the silk up. One more time as I do that, I'm simply bringing my hand over, my right hand over my left, and beginning to push in, okay? Now when I begin to push in, I'm not holding it at the very tip, I'm grabbing it wherever it's convenient and just stuffing it in. Now the big secret here is you wanna put your elbow out and you want to keep your right hand limp-wristed so that the thumb is behind the fingers, right? And you just wanna maintain that. Now, as I do it, I am stuffing down, but that stuffing down can actually be accomplished in an even safer way if you move your left hand up towards those fingers, right? So you can make sure that you're not waving around and making yourself paranoid. So you're gonna use all the different fingers. You're gonna dance around from finger to finger, and this is important because it's gonna cover when you do it with your thumb and make it so that no one notices because you're using all the different fingers, okay? So let's talk about that. And if I miss something, Alex, pop in and tell me, but I'm stuffing. Notice every time you stuff, you're stuffing from a bit above and getting some of the fabric pushing more of the fabric in. You're going from finger to finger, you can do the thumb, get the thumb into the mix so it's totally uniform. And then when you get to a part where there's a little bit of a tail sticking out, that's important. If you wait till the end, and we've all been here, right panel, we've all experienced this. If you press it down so that the silk is not in any way like a Dr. Scholl's pad holding your thumb in there, that's the general idea. If you don't do that, there's gonna be nothing to hold the tip on your thumb, right? And as you do it, this is gonna fly out. Give me a one on the panel as well as out there in, in, in Magic Land if you have thrown a thumb tip across a room this way before. Steve, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we all have. So let's take a look at this again. I'm going finger, 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 finger finger, finger, and when I get to this point, I stick my thumb in. Now, as you do this, lots of times you will occasionally have just a touch of silk coming out, and it's not the end of the world. When On the rare occasions that happens, do not give it a moment's thought. In fact, that's the key is you have to just keep going. But it's relatively easy to make it so that doesn't happen. Now, notice after I do the thumb, I come and I continue to do other fingers and I even draw more attention to that by making it even more tense. And that thumb is still hidden behind the, all that other stuff. So it's great. And notice how by holding your hand in the same position the whole way through, the 
the move is long over. And you're going to say it's red on one side. You're going to drop this hand down and immediately bring it to the opposite position. So your thumb tip hand is in the center of you. You bring down. So, so the left hand goes to the left and it's like you're holding the silk. So let me just show you real quick what that full sequence will look like. Then we'll talk our way through it. It's red on one side and transparent on the other, right? Snap is going to bring it back. So again, these movements are designed to give you the perfect cover without you having to worry about it because you know, you're going to be thinking about that thumb on your hand, what to do with my hand. Well, you never have to think about it because you're always going to do the same thing, right? Stuff, 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 down, full hand to the left and then boom, it's transparent. Now you're holding the thumb tip there. Notice I've got a little something there you'd never see, right? And what I do is I shift to the right and I shift to the left. Notice that most of that movement is happening with my left hand. Shift to the left and I move this over a little bit, but mostly I'm keeping it right in front of you. I'm not doing this, <laughs> right? I'm All that action's over here. And this is staying in front of the audience and it's only moving from there to there. Transparent on that side, right? And then here's what you're going to do. You're going to basically, in transit, leave the thumb tip in your left hand as you look up and snap. And most of the time, you're going to actually see that appear at that moment, right? You pull this out. Now, as I pull it out, I do the same thing as before. I grab it with my first two fingers and my thumb. So this comes all the way out, and as I come out, I relax my thumb and hold the silk with my first two fingers so I can drag, come straight down into the thumb tip and drag it right through. Hey, that's, it's, Oops, it's, it's, it's really, yeah. How, how did you snap your, uh, how do you snap your fingers with the tip on? It looks like I'm snapping my fingers with the tip on, but I'm not. This is the this is how you can demonstrate to yourself. Uh, I think it's Garnet that that truly you can't spot the moment when anything happens, right? Because gone, gone. But what happens is I look up, I look to the right where I'm going to snap. I bring my hands together as I'm going to snap. We look down and there it is, right? So I guess that time my snap wasn't too crisp, transparent on that side, right? But if I give a snap, it comes right back out. And everyone is so shocked they don't see your hands come together. They're not paying attention as your hands come together. And of course you've got all this cover. Did that make sense, Mr. Garvin? Yeah. Yeah, that, that totally makes sense. And what size silk are you, are you, would you recommend for people that want to like tackle this big, this, this fundamental stuff here? I recommend, you know, you're using a standard size tip. I think Adam's going to talk to us in just a little bit about different sizes, but I am using a standard, I believe this is standard. It, it might be slightly uh, vinyl. It's not super hard plastic, but it doesn't matter if you end up with a bit of an El Cheapo, right? Do you know what... Yeah, I'm just going to say it's six inches. Go with the six inches for a standard thumb tip. This, I believe, is silk, is, but I think it's diamond cut. Yeah, that's a 12 yeah. inch diamond cut silk. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's 12? Yeah. Oh, it's from that corner to that corner. Yes, Steve. I was going to say, you know what I do that? Um, do you ever have a problem when you take your thumb tip off, it pops? Mm. Right? I'm not, like, teaching, I'm not teaching that method. Yeah, I'm I know. But what, it happens a lot of times. What I do is I just pop a hole in it. Oh, so down on the thumb tip pad of it, uh, it'll still stick on, you know, but when it comes off, it's a lot easier to take off because that air, you're not trying to break the stuff. Oh. Yeah, no, oh, I'm, wow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show the, uh, that's a great idea, Steve. I just want to show everyone these movements um, so that I can make it clear. So where are we going to start? Are we going to do the snap again? Take it all the way through? So, sorry, Steve, I hate right. he is acting up. So, boom, boom, I look up. As I look up, 
I bring my hands together just like this. They see it appear. I pull it out enough as I'm pulling it out in the first action, I get my first two fingers around it and that happens. And everybody is kind of at that moment, even though they're looking at you, they're not seeing you. And as you come back down, you come straight back down and then turn around in your hand as you drag the silk through like so. Great. You know, Aaron, that in transit action that you're talking about, you, you, so sometimes, so I notice I've seen you do this a bunch and sometimes I notice that when you show the silk, you, you'll throw it up in the air and use that as the moment for the in transit. And sometimes you, you don't, is there like a certain, or is it just sort of like jazz? Do you decide at the moment whether, whether or not you want to toss it up and do that or whether you just want to use the in transit? Uh, well, I'm actually using the in transit either way. I mean, I sort of feel like whenever your hands come together and they're not supposed to, it works very much like a top change, right? So just to, just to sort of talk a little bit more about, I think the, I, I got a Barcelona penalty once because of the word uh, in transit action. I think, I think sometimes the language, which is meant to make things clearer, can make things less clear, right? Mm -hmm. So the issue is, it's a simple idea. It's not really a simple idea, is it, Steve? Uh, I'm not following you right here. I'm sorry. I apologize. And I didn't, and I was just getting rid of the big words. The idea of the <laughs> intransit action, right? The idea of the intransit action. Whenever your hands come together, this happens when we do palms or passes or even just secretly move a thumb tip that's not even supposed to be there from one hand to the other. My hands aren't really supposed to come together. This happens whenever we do a vanish. Our hands aren't really, it's not supposed to be something we think about. We think about the wand we're picking up or something like that, right? So it's the same here. So what's going to happen is I'm looking at the audience. Now, if I had a coin in my hand that I was about to vanish, I'd be looking at the coin and then the audience. But I'm looking at the audience. Isn't that amazing? Now I'm going to turn my gaze to what I like to say is the object of the open action. That could be picking up a wand, that could be grabbing a person by the arm, that could be any one of a thousand things with an object over here. In this case, I'm looking to where I'm gonna snap. I just look to here and everyone's gaze follows my gaze. And as I do it, I move with my hand to go do the snap. And all of the attention is on where I'm looking and why I'm looking there. And so as I do that, there's a bit of a wind up. I look and you do it with your whole torso and it draws more attention. I look and as I look, I let my hands swing together as I snap. And the idea is, is that any secret action that happens after your gaze moves and right before you do the thing your gaze is looking to becomes psychologically invisible and they can't see it. And Garnet thought I'd snap my fingers with the thumb tip on because it's psychologically invisible. Yes, you're right. He, so, he did. So Adam, and that's good because that means it's working, right? It's because working. The, thing, the thing that gets us all about <laughs> thumb tips is we think, well, my skin tone's wrong. Well, this is shiny. My skin isn't. And all of us used to go to the magic store when we were kids and have an old man of some sort do a, do a, you know, show us a chrome plated thumb tip and that it was totally invisible. Right, And that's because when you're holding things right and manipulating them correctly, no one has a chance to actually see it. So Adam, in answer to your question, I always go in transit on that moment because I have to bring my hands together and I don't want anyone to see it and it's not invisible, okay? So on the second round, and I think the second round is just as important in the video, in the video, now often after that, I don't always do, I don't always do that equipment, right? I don't always steal that thumb tip. You don't have to, right? You can pull that thumb tip out, the silk out. And often I used to teach beginners just to hold it this way. If you do that, you can go right back into it and there's no need to add that extra move if it's making you uh, a little uncomfortable. Now, I, the, I think some of the other guys can talk, some of the stage guys can talk about how to minimize the stuffing action. But if you drag up a little bit before you poke, you can really make it less. But I personally, 
want to make sure there's plenty of them because I want my thumb to get lost in the maze. The important thing is after the thumb, you push, push, push. Now you turn to the left. So you're going right from there to there. Notice we have a nice tense hand. Vanish. And then what I do is I sweep my hand back. I sweep my hand back and forward. And then a three-way stuffing action and it's gone. And so the idea there is though, even though you're not clean, clean, your hands aren't empty, right? But the punctuation makes the audience feel, boom, ta-da, nothing to see here. And you could even, nothing to see. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great moment there at the end. I mean, really to make it feel like those hands are empty. I mean, you know, you're, you, it's, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful routine. It really it's is. Never that. It's never that friends. That's never why never. we go through this whole thing is that you go forward, you boom, empty, then you clap forward and then you clap up and then you clap down. So you can see if I go real slow, you can see where the thumb tip is. But notice all of a sudden, I've stopped moving in the correct rhythm and you have a chance to see it now. But when we do it, boom, the way it's supposed to be, you can poke it right at them and no one's ever gonna see it. After you get this silk vanish down, use the silk, use the silk, use the cover that it gives you. You may choose to use it for the rest of your life. You may choose to use it whenever there's mixed company and, and little people and big people and you need some magic you can see and there's a band playing and you need something that pops. And I'd be lying if I told you I haven't opened with it on many occasions. But after you get this down, you have the exact same method you need to do the salt vanish that I teach for our members in uh, one of our amazement plans. And you also have the confidence you need to do all the magic that the guys are gonna share with you next. It's a great yeah. trick, man. It's like one of the first yeah. magic tricks I ever saw. And I saw, it, I was a little kid in a school assembly and a police officer came to our school and he used it as a, don't get into the car with strangers message, right? He would say, if you, get, if you go into a car with strangers, you'll never be seen again. And it was like, well, he closed this whole presentation to little kids. It was perfect. Um, all the kids leave crying. <laughs> you know what might help Barnet right now is there is one advanced steal, the Slidini steal, will allow you, look, I think if you're gonna do the starter version, the stuffing is important. There's always gonna be a certain amount of stuffing to make sure that it's a clear lock when you get it. You need to get it to lock and fuse into your thumb. So you have to stuff afterwards with more tension so that that vanishes from their perception, right? And you have to feel great about it. Now, once you're comfortable with that, you can do the Slidini steel, which Alice can show you, which, is I think a more artistic, uh, advanced method. But, but remember with the thumb tip, the fear is the thing. So it's best to use the method that allows you to tumble through that quickly and then refine. Go ahead, Alex. Okay, so let's talk about that little sugar packet thing. So you need a, a thumb tip. For this one, I like to use a classic thumb tip, so that, and that's the, uh, the harder plastic one. Uh, and you need to prepare this by getting a sugar packet inside. Uh, now here's the thing, you can use regular sugar packets for this, but it's better if you use the fake sweeteners because the fake sweeteners, it's smaller crystals than regular sugar crystals, which allows for all of the material inside the sugar packet to, if you shake this, it'll shake down into a little tiny bundle at one end. And if you compare this with a sugar packet, you'll find that it's much more bulky and it's just more you have to deal with inside the thumb tip. So I prefer the fake sweeteners for this. And what you do is you, you basically get where that sweetener is at the bottom. This is all empty paper up here. And you make that into a little, a little cushion, right? Where your thumb is going to sit. That's basically how it's going to sit inside the thumb tip. So I put that little ball of the, the crystals down in first into the thumb tip, just like this. And then I push this in the rest of the way so that everything goes down to the bottom. And that packet is just right below the lip of that thumb tip, if that makes sense there. Mm -hmm. So with that down inside there, I'm clean, I'm ready to begin. Uh, I do this uh, often as an impromptu trick. Uh, if there's people that haven't seen me do magic before, I'm with friends that know I do magic, and they haven't seen anything close up, this is a great trick for that. Pull out a little packet of uh, 
of these, just a little stack of them. And you can hold them in a fan as if you're doing a card trick, pick a, pick a sugar packet, any packet. But in reality, that just hides the fact that I have this thumb tip. I use this fan to hide that so I can just be clean and nonchalant. Uh, and once they take one out, then I reach into my pocket and I grab a pen, give them a pen and let them write something on it. And I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to put a big X on there, sort of like we did in that performance video so that you can see it's marked. And the reality is, is that you could do this, uh, you could get this thumb tip on with it already prepared, just have this in your pocket next to your pen so that when you grab your pen, you grab your thumb tip too and you're ready to go. Uh, or you can do this little, nice little uh, presentation that I did where you're just showing a fan of the, of the sugar packets. But either way, you're ready to begin. You have the sugar packet that's going to be switched in and torn up, and then the one that's known, which is marked and signed. Uh, again, I shake it, have them shake it if you want. And very simply, I do this. I put this into my hand, and I bring out the other sugar packet. And let me get the, uh, the other camera, I have the eye in the sky here, the other camera here, just so you can see from behind what's happening. And that will help when I uh, talk about the other steel as well. So let me uh, get to a position here so we can make this easy to understand. So again, we have this packet inside the thumb tip. And we have the marked sugar packet. And what happens is this, is I take that, I give it a shake, and this goes into the hand. And notice where that sugar packet goes goes right behind that thumb tip so that I can grab the thumb tip and the sugar packet and bring this up like this so I can tear. But here's the timing on this. You give it a shake, you put it in the hand, you pull it up, mm -hmm. right? And once you pull it up like this, now I'm ready to tear. Uh, so let me do that one more time because once we tear it, we're sort of, uh, there's no, no going back. <laughs> give it a shake, you put it in the hand, you pull up and you tear. And once I've done this tear, I drop that to the table and I take over the sugar packet with my right hand. Remember, I'm in this position here. I have that sugar packet right below the thumb tip. Now I have this big open cavity here where I'm going to just drop that sugar right in, right? And of course it's below the hand, so I have this situation, but I'm going to just put it up here so you can see everything that happens. Uh, you will have to squeeze this packet because you squeeze all those crystals down to the bottom you're going to have to sort of knead this and break up those crystals again. But when you do that, you get that nice picture of all these of all, of all the sugar falling down into your fist. And then once you've done that, you make this into a little ball. You drop that down in there. And you take this, and I say something about it being a receipt, and drop that down in there. And now, notice where I'm at. I could easily go in with my thumb here and steal that off the way we were talking about before. But if you use Slidini's method, then this is, Cellini has this in his book and he claims that it's Slidini's. I haven't seen Slidini in print. I'm guessing it's something that he taught in lessons. But as far as I can tell, this is Slidini's move. And what happens is this, is that you, you're pushing down some sugar apparently, but when I do that first poke, I do this. Uh, let me see if I can get the angle here. I push out just like that, right? So I'm pushing sugar, but I'm really just pushing that and getting that ready. And what that allows for is that my thumb can now go right into that thumb tip rather than coming in through the top. But there's a thing that happens. Notice the sugar on the top of my hand. <laughs> That's there for a reason. I push like this. I kick that thumb tip out the back. And now I come in and steal as I brush that sugar off the top of my hand. And I say, watch, a little blow. And now the sugar packet is completely restored. And I turn it around and I can show that their mark is on the sugar packet. One more time, the revelation, I push it in, it comes out the back, I brush off the top of the hand, I blow, the thumb tip comes right on top of that sugar packet as I blow again and show that it's restored and I can hand that out and let them see the sugar packet. And that's the torn and restored sugar packet. Really cool trick. I hope you all try it. It's a great, a great way to do this thing because you are so covered with, uh, pardon me, you're so covered with every angle with it all being so cozy and in the fist like this, and you get that nice show of the sugar falling. There's a lot, a lot going for it. I think it's a really cool trick and it's a real fooler. It's just a real fooler. Uh, so hope you try it. Hope you check it out and check out that Slidini steel because that is a great move for all thumb tip magic. It's a fun thing to work with and uh, I'm sure it'll add something to everything you do if you handle a thumb tip at this point. And you won't have to carry 
a magician's handkerchief, never call that a silk. And you won't have to carry a silk around with you, right? You'll just be able to carry your thumb tip and do magic with whatever is around, which I think is the sort of holy grail. And it's, and it's not that far away, right, Alex? That's right. That's right. Check out the training uh, in, in the back room. I have a couple other items that I've done on thumb tips. One of them is, you know, what, how, how do you vanish a match, right? That's a great impromptu thing. I have a great production that's back there. I highly encourage you to go and check out in the back room. There's a couple of things. I'm sure Adam will tell you about a couple of them. But there's some great, great thumb tip training in there. I am a big fan of the tool. I think it's sort of indispensable. Uh, it's used in a lot of places you wouldn't expect it to be used. And it's, uh, if you don't know about it, there's no way you're going to catch it. There's no way you're going to see anything that's going on there. And in fact, I've had this happen where I've done very thumb tip centric tricks for people that have seen magicians. And they said this to me, you know, I saw a guy do that same trick, but he didn't do it like you did. He used one of those little rubber thumbs. Yeah. You're down then. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So uh, in the back room, if you're a Conjure community member, we've got uh, great training with a thumb tip in there, stuff like the $100 bill change, the ultimate torn and restored bill, as well as dozens of other uh, um, applications using the thumb tip. So CC members should check that out. Um, Steve, uh, I'm wondering if, uh, if you've got any particular favorite thumb tip things that you like to do. You know, it's funny because it's like, this was a staple for a long time, you know, and then I just stopped doing it, you know, and I, and I don't really know why, but um, uh, same kind of thing before I got your pocket square, right? And if you notice, there's a little, little fray. Sometimes you can see there's a little bit of a fray on it. Can you see it? And uh, you never pull a thread on these because when you do, um, you can make a, you can make a pretty big uh, hole in your... <laughs> <laughs> your chip, you know it's never going to work out like that yeah that's awesome yeah it's such like, a great uh, trick man it, well but you don't want to have the hole right so no, what you no, do no, no. sometimes you can just kind of get it to go back in like that and then if you watch the hole just kind of vanishes like oh that's great that's fantastic yeah so yeah, that that's, that's the one that i like because uh it's the vanish of the handkerchief but the other handkerchief gives you so much cover Mm -hmm. you know you know what steve the thing that's great about that it's like that sh sugar packet trick you have you have cover there's nowhere to see the thumb tip in any place in the routine there's right nowhere because you have, you're holding a silk in each hand at one point or you're straightening that thing out yeah, when, you, when you hidden. do this deal like this right i mean here we are right here it's great it's just like look how clean that is you're just like you know i i the thumb tip is i'm when i used to bartend the vanishing the cigarette was that was like like when i say it was money i mean it was money <laughs> you know what i mean like you know that was like my big my big deal when i was bartending i would do, i would vanish the cigarette and you know people would chant for it and you're like gosh i better go to the magic store i'm burning a hole in my three dollar thumb tip that's making me 75 bucks a weekend you know it's <laughs> funny steve i i, I uh, spent a little time with mike finney uh, uh -huh. hung out with him, a, you know, a handful of times. And he told me that that was his first magic trick. Yep. And he actually, he didn't get it from a magic, magic store. He was standing behind the bar with another bartender that was doing the trick. And he's like, I got to do it. I need to learn how to do this trick. And the guy's like, all right, I'll teach it to you. That's a hundred bucks. That's right. <laughs> he's like, all right. And he gave him the hundred dollar bill and he gave him a thumb tip and he taught him all the moves and how to do it. And that was Mike Finney's trick. That was the trick he did for the first few years of magic. And then, you know, you know what happened to Mike Finney after that, he eventually created an act, but how wonderful, right? That's, mm -hmm. That shows you the strength of that effect. Well, um, go ahead, Adam. Well, I was just going to say, you know, we've got a free gift. If you're watching this on our YouTube channel uh, or any of our socials, we've got a gift for you. Uh, if you'll look down in the description of this video, we're going to put a link to a really great book that is called, uh, 50 tricks with a thumb tip. It's like a classic thumb tip book came out many years ago. It's got 50 great little quick things that you can do. And so click the link in the description today. It'll take you to that book and you can, you can download it for free. Our gift to you, if you want to get a little more in depth on the thumb tip, I, um, I was, what, what were you saying, Steve? I was going to say that I think if you can say there's a problem with thumb tips, because I personally don't think there is, there's so many things you can do with it. 
And once you take it away from vanishing the silk in your hand, I mean, no one's even ever going to suspect it. But I, I think the thing is exactly what Aaron said and me too. Like I started out when I was 15 working in a magic shop and like, I was told like every person that walks to this counter, try to sell them the vanishing silk handkerchief. Like, you know, I've been to like other magician shows where that's the thing they sell after the show, right? For like five bucks. It's like the thumb tip and the, and the silk handkerchief. So it gets kind of a amateur rap, but it's really the ultimate utility item. I mean, you can do mentalism, you can billet switch, you can vanish any small object that'll fit in there. There's just so many things that you can do with it. So yeah. many. I think that the $100 bill switch is right on par with that vanish, vanishing cigarette. I think just that effect alone is just on par. It's just such a, it's, it's like, a, like a punch in the face when it happens. It's so strong. Right. Yeah, totally. So one of my, one of my very favorite things to do with a thumb tip uh, when I was a kid is to, is to do this where you, where you actually can balance the card on the back of your hand. <laughs> I like remember this, this. Which looks, it looks super, it looks like it's super impossible and super clean where you can now show the card very, you know, cleanly. But that's a great, I think that's a great, you know, a great use where you can use the thumb tip for something that no one would expect you to be able to use it for balancing that card. That's a real fooler, man. That's really cool. Yeah. You know, a lot of people are going to ask too, like what size thumb tips would you use for like the cigarette thing? I think I prefer, like I have a thumb tip that, that I like these big mama jamas, these big jumbo ones for the cigarette vanish personally. Um, I like them because, you know, the thing about the cigarette vanish is you never know, like, like if you're in a situation, I'm assuming if you're doing this in street magic, or you're hanging around, you see the opportunity to do this then you never know where that cigarette's going to be. It could have just been lit or it could be really small. And wow, so that's the a thing good is, point. Yeah, it, it is a good point. So this larger thumb tip is there just in case it's a, it's a freshly lit cigarette. It will hold a whole cigarette in there and you don't have to really worry about, uh, you know, it sticking out of the end or actually burning you. So it'll put it out nice and, and well. So that's what I, I recommend using those larger thumb tips. Also, you know, the larger thumb tip is going to hold a larger, a larger silk, which is going to make this more impressive. When I was a kid, I would always, the thumb tip, you know, when you're doing a thumb tip silk vanish with a silk that's this size, this is not a diamond cut silk. This is a tiny silk. It's just not as impressive to, to vanish, you know, as it is when you've got a silk this size, it's just much, much more material. But uh, so that is one good thing about the larger thumb tips. And as far as ex spending money on really expensive thumb tips, don't do it. I would buy the Vernet thumb tips. They're just solid, very inexpensive thumb tips. You can get large, medium, small, fingertips, all kinds. And you, can, uh, and you can get stuff that'll really match your skin tone really well. So this one, you know, is a little bit of a lighter one, which kind of matches my skin tone a little bit better. And of course, this one is a little bit darker, which also doesn't match my skin tone as well. But it doesn't really, that doesn't really matter. What we've been explaining today is if you handle it right, no one's ever going to really see the dang thing. Well... Adam, the, the color and the size are, again, both related to whatever makes you feel a little more at ease when you're learning, right? And, and I would say the color and the size. Like a big one will freak you out, too, when you're getting started. So, having a, it, you know, I don't feel like you have a big old swollen thumb. Mm. Like you had a bad bee sting or something. And that's fine once you're totally comfortable with the movements because you understand that you're safe. But before that, mm, you might be a little bit hot under the collar. Hey, Adam, right. we had a request. Would you mind showing the balancing of that card one more time just so we can, we can get a good look at it? Yeah, so I, I, uh, so I, like, to use the, um, <clears throat> I like to use the larger thumb tip for this. Uh, it, it, it feels a little more steady. So you've got the thumb tip on your right hand. You, you show the card, and you're, you're pretty fr free to show it, take it. You can have them select it. And then you put it into your right hand. And as you put it into your right hand, you're going to go kind of, like that's how you're going to hold it. You're going to hold it deep, right? So you kind of line the thumb tip up with the bottom of the card. That way, I'll perform it this way. That way, uh, when, you're, when you're showing it here and you go to remove it, you get to remove the thumb tip and the card, and you know the thumb tip is pretty much lined up with the bottom. 
So now you're in this position, put your hand here really flat, you set it down, let me turn the other way. So you're in this position here, you set it flat on the back of your hand here, and then you're just going to have to give it a moment because you'll, you'll have to kind of lean the card back. But that's going to be fine because it's going to, to the spectator, just look like you're trying to find the balancing point. Now I will, I will say if your hands are shaking, if you're a little nervous, this is not going to work really well, so you got to be pretty confident with it. But there it is, it's balancing. And so now you just reverse the procedure. You come back, you clip the thumb tip against the back, you lift up, you turn this way, you insert your thumb, and you show the card here, both sides, and you're out. Mm -hmm. That was great. Yeah. You know, uh, put a one in the chat if you think fire makes everything better. <laughs> fire. <laughs> yeah, everyone's like a one. Uh, I mean, I'm guilty as charged putting way too much lighter fluid into anything that required lighter <laughs> fluid. <laughs> like a dove pan, you know, like I would like huge fires. Uh, if my parents knew what was happening in the rec room in the basement, they would have probably had a heart attack. But, uh, Steve's not allowed to do magic anymore. <laughs> yeah. What's that smell down here? Nothing. <laughs> anyway, one of the things I used to do, especially with the cigarette vanish, is take a little flash paper and put it down in the bottom of that thumb tip. So what's when the do? cigarette goes in there, what's that? What does that do? Yeah. But, you know, flash paper. Yeah. So when you put the flash paper in there, when the cigarette goes in, a little like flame, like, woo, it kind of flies out of there for a second. So it looks like you're just burning the crap out of your hand even more. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> wow. What when you're like, and then that, when that flash goes, it's the perfect opportunity for you to, uh, I don't have a cigarette, but you know, the, the, you have the cigarette here, it goes in and then it flashes and you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like you're trying to put out the fire. <laughs> and then you just come away and it's over, you know? And that, that was the, um, that was for sure. That was the one I did behind the bar all the time. Cause people would be watching the flame would shoot out of your hand. You'd be like, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. Trying to put it out. That's, that's a great touch on that. I've never heard that before. That's really cool, man. I yeah, like I've that. Never, I've never heard that before. You either. never that's heard that. Really cool. huh. I was so lucky as a kid because I was just accidentally surrounded by great magicians. You know, 